Listen as God speaks once again to us this morning. The Lord, your God, is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. How can we resist jumping for joy? You just heard that from the Old Testament. Many times we look at it, we even talked about it in Bible study the other day. Well, the Old Testament, no, it's not. It's about the glory of God. It is about the gospel of the coming of the Messiah. There is gospel all throughout the Old Testament. And with that, and with these words, we should rise in our hearts with joy. Because you see what? There is no question your importance to God, especially your joy. Listen once again. God is in your midst. Your God is in your midst. Spoken through God to Zephaniah, but it wasn't just for that moment. It is for you today. He is mighty one to save. Talking about God. The mighty one to save. He will rejoice over you. That's a difficult one. Imagine God rejoicing over us, but he is rejoicing over us because in Jesus Christ we are absolved of all of our sin. It's not a little bit calmer. He will quiet you with his love. We'll talk about that in a moment. And he will exalt over you with loud singing. If that's not enough proof, I'll draw you once again to the very holy word of God. Took out my ESV Bible concordance. I didn't bore you with it today, but last week we talked about the number of times love is used. This week we're going to talk about the number of times one of four words are used. Either joy, joyful, joyous, and rejoice. Over 300 times in the Bible. Do you think it is important to us? Do you think it's important to God, our joy? It absolutely is. It's important to God because proof. He made the garden, right? Absolutely. Secondly, he made the world. He made the universe, right? He made Adam and Eve and every human being since. And you and I are created. For joy. Joy during this Christmas season. I'll remind you, LSB hymnal lists 86 Advent and Christmas songs of joy. And I'm sure if I spoke with Christian, he could list out a plenitude of more that are actually written out there for us in which to enjoy. Secondly, if you just like Christmas carols, this isn't an advertisement, but you could listen to K-E-Z-K, or you could even ask for Christmas carols on Alexa. Hey, Alexa, play me Christmas carols. One of my favorites, Mary, did you know? Put that thought in your mind. Yes, these weeks before Christmas are a great time of joy. Anytime. We're looking for joy. All we need to do is look to Jesus. Prior to speaking these words <clears throat> of joy that God sent through Zephaniah, both he and his people were searching for joy. They were having great difficulty there with one another. It was a divided nation, northern, southern kingdom. And there was always hostility between them, even fighting. They would speak lies and threats to one another, building immovable barriers between themselves. And all the time, they talked about holding on to the hope that they had. Their joy would be returned to them. But they missed the one place to look for that joy. They looked within themselves rather than looking to their Lord. Now, 
you may be thinking, and I've only been here a few months, but when we talked about what was going on with the Israelites at the time, the northern and southern kingdom, yes, history kind of repeats itself, doesn't it? Because you and I live in a divided nation that seems to take pride in lies, threats against one another, and now that even has a tendency to want to impact our joy, to snatch our joy away even in this season of rejoicing. We can't let that happen. God saw how far his people had moved away from him and his love. So what does God do? He comes to them. God comes to them through the prophet Zephaniah, delivers a special prophecy that would absolutely amaze all of their people. Prophecy of the promised event would be delivered by him. It is the promised delivery of God himself into their midst, right in there with them. Christ the Savior is born. And when that happens, God, along with all the company of heaven, rejoice, don't they? They rejoice and sing over God's people on this, what I would call, special delivery for all people. So in our divided nation, with the anger, the threats that we see in here, in a nation where many families yesterday were devastated by storms and tornadoes, which snatched their joy, snatched their loved ones right away from them. Can we rejoice? Should we rejoice? Rejoice at, beyond those things, the hunger that this nation and the world sees. Violence, wars, terror. How can we keep our joy, O oh Lord. Listen once again what God said. He will quiet you by his love. Family of Zion, these people and these things that happen around us are not in control of you. Those who divide this nation will never see joy until they look to the one who provides all joy. Until they look to the one who is sovereign over all people and all things. The one who is in control. Then and only then will they find joy. The joy that we can experience each and every day of our lives. A joy that lifts us up even in the dark events that surround us. This morning, on Lanell and <clears throat> my way in here, we stopped to get a beverage for our kind of drive-in. I walk in the convenience store, and I had a lot of people in there. There's only three associates in there working. So I go up, and I, I'm getting a beverage, and one of the associates there is cleaning up, and we just started having a little conversation about the joy of the day. Then we move to the devastation that happened actually in our area, in the Edwardsville area, of the tornado. And she turned at me, of course I have my clerical on, maybe that helps, but she turned to me and she said, the gentleman over here just lost his friend yesterday. He couldn't get into the building in time, he was outside of the building and swept away. How do you bring joy into someone like that's life? You can't ignore what God puts right before you. God put the opportunity, and it's not because I'm a pastor, but because I'm a Christian, 
And maybe it's because I had, and I started thinking about this message today of having joy in my heart, to be able to put my hand on that young man's shoulder, pray with him, try to give him comfort and peace that he could share not only within himself for the loss of his good friend, but maybe, just maybe, with that family as well. You don't have to be a pastor to take the advantage of the gift of the Holy Spirit, putting something right before your very eyes. And I wasn't speaking to that young man. The Holy Spirit was speaking through me, and he speaks through you. Joy is believing in God. Believing in God and all of his promises. Even when it seems dark, when that darkness surrounds you, kind of crowds in on you. Joy is believing in whom we cannot see over the things in which we face. Our almighty God calls us, invites us, to look beyond the dark days of today, still to the coming of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, the fulfilled promise of joy and peace. Because in Jesus alone, you have become right with God. Yeah. Right with God. God's holy word calls it righteousness through Jesus Christ, your Lord. That's a righteousness you have right now in your resurrected Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That is pure joy. That gets us through the darkness. That is what we must share with all others. And remember, he will exalt over you with loud singing, not because of what you do, but because of whom God is and the joy he has for you. You and I must never, ever allow the joy that is yours right now, by grace through faith, on account of Jesus Christ, to be stolen from the darkness. When you become distracted by everything else that's going on around you, look to the Lord, because the Lord continually will remind you to rejoice in this way, as God speaks through Peter. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Jesus Christ is the mighty one to save, the one who was promised. One thing that's to me is really amazing about joy in the Lord is that it is there for us at all times. Consider. Joy includes your worship here together as one today. Joy, of course, includes the season of Christmas. It includes the season of the resurrection. It includes the entire church year. Joy includes gathering of family and friends that we will be doing this month yet. <clears throat> However, pure joy, lasting joy, becomes a choice for us every day. Now, joy seems like it would be the natural thing for us to do, right? To choose, right? Who wouldn't choose joy? But natural joy does not come naturally, does it? So for now, how do we choose joy? When in the face of darkness, like I was this morning, I stopped. I stopped filling my cup of coffee. I sent a little prayer thought up to the Lord. What should I do? 
Sometimes when you're faced with darkness, maybe you just need to count to ten. Remember when you used to have to do that? Maybe you have to count to ten. Before doing or saying everything, anything. First, look to your Lord. And ask him to lead you to choose joy. And how you can share that joy with someone else. Can't take that minute? Stop and think about this for a minute. Whatever and whomever is bringing that darkness into you can wait. That situation can wait. That person can wait for you to gather your thoughts through your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So as our Lord rejoices over you for having forgiven you all your sins, let him always lead you, and he will do it. He does it. All we have to do is think about it lead you in prayer and in worship to crush any threat to stealing your joy. That joy that is in your heart, that joy you possess in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And God will do it because your joy is always important to the Lord. 